Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival on Alpha 12.3.3. I'm an old guy gaming. Hey, it is Tuesday, August the 4th. Tomorrow is the scheduled release day of the game. Uh, so this might be my last um, tutorial on 12.3. Um, so I think what we'll do is we're going we're gonna to go ahead and decorate our base. And then what I'll, I'll do is blueprint it. And then um, when, when uh, the game is released... On version 1.0, we will start a new world, and then I'll just spawn um, the base back in. In fact, we can we can blueprint this too, so just so it's exactly the same as it was before. Uh, so let's do that right now. So let's go all to zero, and we're gonna save this um, as. Let's see, this is a hover vessel, and we're gonna save it as. Damaged hover bike tutorial. Tutori. <laughs> we'll just call it toot. Okay. And that way we can just spawn it right back in uh, to the new world. Let's go ahead and, and actually save the building right now too. But then we'll, we'll update it after we paint it. Just so I don't forget to do so. So let's do an alt zero on that. And we're going to save this as tutorial base there we go so that way we can spawn it right back in uh because th really this base what's inside of it and this hovercraft is, are the only things that we currently have in our possession that we'd need to bring over uh the survival constructors are no big deal i mean we do have some blocks and stuff in here but i'm not really too worried about that because that stuff's easy to uh you know to get back okay so um and you know we can use the same seed too so assuming the um you know the random gen part of it works exactly the same then it should give us this exact world back too all right so uh in this episode our main purpose is to decorate and paint our base and then after we do that depending upon how our time goes uh, we're going to start working on building out our greenhouse wing uh, which is going to go out that way and we also want to build a large landing pad out the back uh, out in the back 40 here so the first thing we need to do is we need to get ourselves a texture and color tool. So we go to our constructor, and that's this guy right here. And it's pretty pretty cheap to make. A couple of electronics, four nanotubes, not a big deal at all. Now the thing about the texture and color tool, and I didn't mention this in the last um, part where we were using this in creative mode, is that it doesn't require any kind of fuel source or paint cartridge or anything like that. And that's always... I mean, I wouldn't say it's bothered me, but I just think that the game would be a little more immersive if this required fuel, like Promethean packs or something like that. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Um, I've heard other people talk about that too, but um, at present, it's free. I mean, it doesn't cost you any kind of fuel to use it. Uh, so, you know, it's what it is. It, actually, you know what would be cool is if we could actually make paint cartridges. So, you know, with Promethean and maybe different you know, types of plants or something for the color. I don't know, just just some ideas. But anyway, it is what it is, and we just got to work with it the way that we, we have to work with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, one thing that I will often do with the core on my base is I'll actually bury it underground and make like a backdoor access tunnel to it um, so that if... <coughs> Excuse me. I'm <coughs> sorry. Something in my throat. Uh, if the... Um, Xerax attack us and try and hack the core. The idea is you put it in a place to where you can get back to it and take it back over uh, once they've hacked it. Um, so it's you know if they if if you don't stop the the troop ship from dropping troops in your base and you don't kill those troops quickly enough, they can hack your core. And it doesn't really matter you know where the core physically is. If, if they can get to the base or even within a certain range of the base, they can hack it. So, and when that happens, of course, that means the core um, turns over to them and then the base belongs to them. And it's not a good situation to be in. And so what I'll often do is I'll bury this uh, underground, way underground, and then make, you know, some sort of an access tunnel uh, with the entrance pretty far away from the base so we're not getting hit by enemy fire. And we go back through the tunnel to get to it. We destroy their core. And then we have our own spare core down there. I'm not going to do that in this episode um, because that's not what we have planned and that would take some time. 
uh, but we might do we might do that later we'll see how things go okay so paint tool um, if you guys have not watched part 13 of this tutorial and you're brand new to the game I'd recommend that you stop watching this and you go watch 13 first because we covered uh, this tool in detail and covered all the things that it can do and so on and so forth um, so yeah if you haven't caught that tutorial and you want to learn about the paint tool there's more to this tool than you might think too by the way um, I'd recommend watching that before you watch this that being said let's get started decorating our base here so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply um, the the base texture in other words the main texture to our base first and then we'll just upgrade or update uh, the other parts that we want to later okay and so here's how we're gonna do this we're gonna right click and we're gonna select this uh, little concrete brick texture here okay and then what we're gonna do is oh you know what I forgot about something in our tutorial yesterday um, some of the tools that the tutorial gives us, like the replace option um, and the large paintbrush, is not available in survival mode. I completely forgot about that. So, hmm. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, so be aware of that, you guys. And also keep that in mind, you know, for your builds, if you want the full, you know, capability of the color tool, you have to use it in creative mode. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. I mean, we're not going to be able to apply... All the textures at once like I was hoping we could but it is what it is so I mean the other way we could do this is we could spawn this base into creative decorate it there and then bring it back here but um, that's probably more trouble than it's worth so let's just use it in normal survival mode okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set the paintbrush size to medium and put it on this and I'm also going to use whole block because remember right now we're just taking care of the base uh, the base color of the base and I want this brick option to actually be um, on the walls. And so um, it's going to spill over a little bit, and that's okay. We can fix that later. But I want to start by painting the walls uh, this, this brick texture. Now, when you have stuff in the way, you... Here, let's go back to the small block. Sometimes you can get around it like that, and sometimes you can't. So if you can't, then you just have to go paint it, you know, from in this case, from the outside. Um, that's another situation too where you might want to use the um, the whole block feature just to get on the inside and then you can you know touch it up later if you need to okay that looks good I'm not going to actually paint the cut the corner blocks with this brick we're gonna do something different with those just to add some you know some trim to the base so let's just finish this part here and yeah I think that's looking good all right so Let's go ahead and do our floor next. And so for the floor, um, let's choose, let's see, what do we want to use for the floor? I, I kind of like this little blue tile um, texture or the marble texture is kind of cool. Um, why don't we, yeah, why don't we go with this texture here? Now let's go with the, let's go with this blue. Yeah, I like this better. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get right in the center. We're going to choose our medium brush. And we're going to lay down our floor here. And you just kind of work it over and, you know, as best as you can with trying not to get it to bleed over onto the walls. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Okay, let's just make sure that... It's not uh, bleeding outside, which it doesn't look like it. You know what, though, too? I might want to... I want to change the color of this to maybe more of a gray. So let's, let's go back to small for a minute. I just want to look at a couple of options here. What would black look like? Well, that might look cool. One thing we could maybe do if we wanted to, though, and we learned how to do this in the tutorials, we might want to change that black so it's not quite so black, but make it darker gray. Um, so what we we'll, what we could do is 
why don't we create ourselves a custom palette um, so we're going to click on here and we're gonna go and change this say this one to um, more of a gray a darker gray so let's go ahead and we want to get what we want to do is we want to turn the saturation down and then we want the these guys yeah this down too there we go all right so that you know that's not quite as black as this but it's a darker gray than what was otherwise available to us okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to um copy this and we're going to apply it to um oh i guess we already we already did apply it to the current okay no that's not a problem now, if you do change the current palette, remember we talked about how you can always reset it back to what it was by just doing preset and default one. But we actually want to keep this um, as it is because that's that's what we wanted to do with it. Okay, so let's click OK. And now we have this new gray that we've created. And it's not quite as dark as the black, but it is, you know, I, I think it's going to work better for the floor. All right, cool. Let's go back to medium. And then we're just going to paint the floor with our new custom gray color here. Oh, we hit the food processor, but that's okay. We can fix that later. Cool. Yeah, I like that a little better. The blues, I mean, I don't like blue. It's my favorite color, but I don't know. It, was, it seemed a little bit too much, I think, for for our floor. Okay, we, may, we need to fix that block up there. So let's make sure we turn the color back off and go back to the, uh, the gray brick and set this back to small. Remember, we talked yesterday in the tutorial about if I left click, on a texture or a color, it selects it and closes the menu. If I right click on a texture or color, it keeps the menu open if I need to make additional selections. Okay, so that's on small. Um, it should be on whole block. And now we'll paint that. Very good. Okay, so we could, if we wanted to, now um, paint our foundation and maybe even our trim something different just to give it, you know, give it a little more pizzazz than what it currently has. Uh, pizzazz has hey how about that that was a uh, that was a happy accident a little bob ross thing for you guys uh okay so let's put the uh, is it the xz plane um wait a minute yeah, nope 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 we want this there we go okay so let's put the uh the yz plane on we'll press escape to remove the in menu so that way everything we do on this side will also of course be done on that side uh so let's see for the foundation um, we want to keep it on whole block. We could choose something like, what do we got here? This might look interesting uh, for the foundation here. So, huh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm digging that. I'm not sure I'm digging that. What does this look like? Ooh, that's more of a floor, a floor or wall texture. That could also be an interesting, maybe even a ceiling texture. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't like that for the foundation. How about this? Hmm. Nah. I mean, that could work in in, in some, a different situation, but I don't think it works with this brick. Um, here's what I'm thinking. This is more, you know, modern brick looking, whereas this is rustic looking. And, you know, this painting and texturing is subjective too. I mean, you know, what one person likes isn't necessarily what another person likes. So I couldn't really tell you there's a right or wrong way to do this. It's really just what you like, you know? Um, that's interesting, but still not really floating my boat. What about this? No, that's too weird. <laughs> um... That could work for the foundation. Hmm. I was kind of wanting to go, though, with still, you know, kind of stick with the stone theme. That's not really stone, but that could work. What if we... Let's go back to this page here. We could just go with this. That definitely has, you know, a concrete foundation, you know, type of look to it. Okay, here's a situation. Remember we talked about this 
in the tutorial where this block is actually, you know, it's pivoted so the direction is different. The way that we fix that, and, you know, we can't fix this with the multi-tool, you know, the pivot tool. Well, we don't have a multi-tool right now anyway. Um, so what we do is we remove whole block, and then when we squirt it again, then it'll actually straighten out and line up with the rest of the textures. So, yeah, I mean, let's let's go with this for now. We can always change it later, uh, but at least that kind of gets us something that seems fairly real realistic for a foundation, at least in my brain. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing is, do we want to also make the vertical trim pieces match that, or do we want that to be something different? So, what if we play with that just a little bit? Um, how about... What's this look like? That could work. I almost like that better for down here, now that I look at it. certainly change it. It's not a big deal one way or the other. Oh, see, now that got all out of whack. Yeah, actually, you know what? I like that better. I do. I like that better than the first one we used. Oh, we need to eat something. We're really low on food. That's not good. Well, let's just keep going here. And um, When I get down to, like, one energy bar, I'm going to have to go pick some protein plants. So, okay. Yeah, let's go with that. I like that better. That actually looks better to to me. Paint the stairway too. Cool. Okay, so now what do we want to do for our our trim here? We could actually go with maybe a metal look for that. And so let's see what if we did a metal look. What's going to be somewhat real realistic look that could work for the metal um you know it's not bad what does this look like that could work too um if we went with there's also this just too bad um if we went with one of these two textures um, these textures will actually light up if when you apply a light to the base. So it's kind of a cool little effect. I kind of like that. And, you know, it kind of gives it a little bit of a sci-fi flavor, I think. Yeah, let's go with that for now. You know, as always, we we reserve the right to change our mind. So... For up here, of course, now we're going to use our drone, and we're going to continue with this texture all the way across the top here, and then also down along these sides, except for we want it turned this way. And then also across the front. There we go. We've have, we have to fix this, so let's go to uh, whole block and back to page one and select this guy and fix that. All right, I think that works. I'm kind of digging that. I'm kind of digging that. All right, so now let's do our roof next. And um, so again, it's just a matter of selecting, you know, what seems good to, or realistic to you. I've used this little red tile effect for the roof before, um, but I think I only want to use that on the exterior, not the interior. So we're going to turn off the apply to whole block, and let's just let's get right in the center. Um, actually, no, we don't want to get the center. Let's get right about here, and let's choose medium, and we just want to squirt that. It makes that really irritating popping noise. Um, I wish it wouldn't do that, but it does. Okay, so one thing we have we have to do here now is you'll notice that these textures are 
kind of all turned in a whole bunch of different weird angles. And I believe the game does that to add, you know, some irregular patterns. And that would be fine if they were symmetrical, but they're, they're not. They're just, there's not really any rhyme or reason to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the symmetry plane for this. Because here's the thing. If I, wanna, if I rotate this block over here, depending upon what this block is doing, um, it might, I might basically fix this and then break that at the same time. So to demonstrate that, um, let's go ahead and see how both of these blocks are currently, um, oh, that, oh shit, I forgot, we're on, on the medium, see that, you're gonna do that a million times, <laughs> I forgot we're on the medium thing, so let's go back here and reselect this texture, and fix that again, okay, all right, so anyway, what I was saying is sometimes when you uh, try and change the rotation on one side, the symmetry plane uh, will not behave on the other side. In fact, it looks like it didn't. In this case, it is, but sometimes it doesn't. So, oh, I know why that's, I know why that's happening, because that's a different type of block. That's that light block that we put in. So let's see. Let's say we want to the roof to all go this direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it over here, and, and we'll just see if the symmetry plane does the same thing for us on the other side. It might behave, and then if it does, we're in good shape. It it did. Okay, good. Yeah, so just watch that. Uh, if the symmetry plane cooperates, then of course you can use it, but um, just keep an eye on it because I've seen before where it doesn't. Maybe they fix that. It could, you know, it could be that they fix that. I'm not really sure, but uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go back into our interior now. Um, we'll just bring our, our body in there. And then we want to take care of our ceiling. Um, so let's see. All right, so let's figure out what we want to do for our ceiling now. Um, you know, this this blue texture might look okay for the ceiling, or we also have kind of like this little marble uh, marble texture. We want to make sure that we're not on whole block because we, we don't want to change our roof. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's try this. I'm not 100% sure it's floating in my boat, so to speak. Let's just try it for the moment. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think that that's... Oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> All right, guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut the video here, and uh, I'm going to go grab, you know, farm up some food, because uh, we're going to, you know, we need to. We're almost, we're pretty low here. And then when I'm done with that, we'll come back, and we'll figure out a better ceiling solution, and then continue on. Okay, so I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, I went out and picked a bunch of protein plants. I've killed some critters. Uh, one telepod and several parasaurs mined up a little bit more stone So let's turn this off And I've got um, some protein bars cooking up in my uh, Survival constructor and we're gonna take and put all of our other food items in here <coughs> Excuse me. I picked um I picked some What the hell are you doing? Okay? Uh, I picked some, what I'm trying to say, sweet, sweetener uh, from the alien honey. And so you, if you mix that with the meat, you can actually make ham, which is a little bit better than the, just the, the grilled steak. Um, oh, I take that back. I guess we need spice for that too. Ah, shoot. Okay. Well, um, in that case, let's just make more grilled steak with, with that meat for now. Um, that's a good early game food. Okay. So we got that done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's put that stuff in there and um in the process of doing all that stuff i i actually made it to level seven i was just on the verge of hitting level six before um i i left you in the uh, earlier before we cut the camera so if we go to f3 you can see that i'm level seven now and one of the big things that you want to get uh, as soon as you hit level seven is you want to get the drill now keep in mind though that I still don't have the, um, I still don't have Prometheum. I don't think I have Prometheum. 
yeah to make the to make the packs for that um but what i would do at this stage of the game now is i would be looking for promethium in earnest now because once i can start using my my real drill it's so much better than you know the survival tool <clears throat> and as soon as we can find promethium we can use the normal multi-tool and the drill and we can basically retire this survival tool so um, that you know that is probably one of my highest priorities right now is to is to try and find that stuff uh, but of course you're not we're not going to do that for the rest of this episode uh, because we want to finish decorating our base so let's uh, let's go ahead and make it daytime so we have good light. Pretty overcast out though. Um, you know what I might actually do about that? Just because I want to, you know, I want to have the best light for our coloring here. I'm just gonna do a little cheat. I'm gonna go into the console menu and I'm gonna type um, weather um, off. Okay, and it doesn't have to be in caps. I just fat fingered my keyboard there, and uh, and basically what that does is it just turns off all weather and sets it back to a normal sunny day, uh, which is what we want for what we're doing here. Okay, so let's continue our our texturing um, texturing tasks here. So, yeah, I don't really like that ceiling. Actually, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> you ask me, I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, we had to try it, right? We could. Um, we could go with maybe try this for the ceiling and see what that looks like. You know, that could possibly work. That could possibly work. All right, let's go with a medium brush and just hit it like right there. So we can, you know, cover as much area as possible. And here, we'll just, we'll go back to a small brush just to do this little touch up up here. So that could work. I mean, it, it kind of matches the floor, except for that it's blue instead of black. Um, if we actually wanted it to match the floor, we could use our custom color that we created. Um, it might look better if we if we did a white-ish ceiling, though, now that I think about it, because, um, you know, that's more common, uh, a common color that you would see on a ceiling. So maybe here, let's do, let's do like the outside edges. And then we'll go back to our medium brush and hit it somewhere right about there and right there. Good. Kind of brightens it up in here a little bit too. Yeah, I, li I like that. It kind of gives you the impression of, a, of an actual tiled ceiling. Uh, we don't want this to stay this way though uh, because that's our lamp post. So I might even kind of think in what we might do with this is we might... Um, what if we... we use this <laughs> whoops <laughs> i forgot to turn the medium thing off oh my goodness all right let's um let's we're gonna we're gonna have to take it all off if you um we're gonna take both the color and the texture off is what i meant i didn't mean to take my clothes off you guys wouldn't want to see that anyway okay anyway um we learned in yesterday's tutorial that once you put a texture and a color down you can't remove the color from the texture but you can remove the texture from the color okay so the way we're going to do that is we're going to make sure that this uh, removal button is selected and then this removal option and then it'll remove the texture um why did that also remove the color i don't know oh does that work properly in survival mode because usually it doesn't remove the color hmm that's interesting here, let, let's actually test that theory because I'm curious now. So let's apply um, this uh, this texture and this color. Okay. And now let's go back to removal. Huh, I don't know. That, it just it acts kind of weird sometimes or maybe I'm missing something I'm not sure but anyway yeah let's just remove everything color and um, fuck. <laughs> I keep forgetting I have medium on okay um, so we want white and we want this uh, here let's put no that's oh 
That's kind of cool looking, but no, we want the bigger one. So I think it was this one here, right? I keep hitting the wrong button. This one. No! Why isn't this working for me all of a sudden? Am I on the wrong texture here? Um... It's this texture here, right? Oh, no, no, it's this one. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Old guy moment. Old guy moment. They happened. Okay, so, now, let's take off the doggone medium brush. That's what screwed us up in the first place. Um, let's set this back to... Um, correct, except for... Uh, wait, what? There. Oh, I'm losing my mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do with this little thingamadoodle here is we're going to actually put a light on it. Um, I want to look at something here, though, really quick. Let's go ahead and connect to this and grab a block. Um, so this is the... I think this is the one that we used. Yeah, it looks like this is kind of the only options they give us, because we want to make sure that we completely patch up the square up above, but then have, you know, a little area coming down for the light to sort of hang down on. I don't think, I think these are the only three blocks that actually give us that sort of option as far as I know. Because otherwise, you know, we could have, potentially have a gap or something in there, which we don't want. So, okay. Yeah, we'll stick with what we got. All right, now back to this. We were going to or retexture this something different. We want, to, want it to stay on the white. I think we want it to stay on the white. Let's go here, and we wanted to try this. Now, we're on small this time, right? Okay. Is that not color white? Apparently, that texture cannot be colored. Or it can, but that's just the way white looks on it, I suppose. Hmm, interesting. From here, it looks like it's not colored at all. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know, do we like that or not? What if we go with something like more like this? Let's, let's try that, and if I decide later on I don't like it, we... Well, I reserve the right to change my mind. How's that? All right, so let's see. We got the ceiling done and the light post done. Now what we might want to do is do something with the entryway here. So I, I kind of like to use this, this texture here for walkways because it's kind of like that, you know, um, I don't know what, what you call it, but it's the, the traction type of thing thingamadoodle that you see on metal structures sometimes that you walk on. So that, I think that's appropriate. But what we could do is we could use our custom color for it. it. Looks a little blacker on here than it does on the tiles. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm down with that. Um, if we wanted to, we could change the entryway to something different. Just for the hell of it. Uh, we could maybe use our... Uh, use this texture for that too. That looks kind of neat. I'm down with that. Okay. And then same thing here. And this needs to be... Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? This texture. And I'm not going to put a stairway or a ramp here because we're going to this is going to extend out into another wing anyway. Now, one thing that's kind of cool about some of these textures is that if we turn our light off, it's a cricket. Okay, I think this is the first time we've seen this guy. This guy is kind of a pain in the ass because what he'll do is he'll kind of troll you a little bit. And then if you turn your back on him, he'll actually attack you. Um, or he might attack you. He's, he's unpredictable, essentially. Um, and, of course, you know, we can't have unpredictability when we're trying to do a tutorial. That's just not right. So, you die. He, he, can, he can hurt you, too. I mean, he will hurt you. Um, so don't take him 
for granted. And sometimes you can find these guys in packs, like there's two or three or four of them around, and they can just be a real big pain in the ass. So consider this creature dangerous, is what I'm trying to say. And eliminate him before he eliminates you. But he's not like a raptor. A raptor is just haul out, balls out aggressive, and he's going to attack you on sight. Whereas this guy's going to kind of troll you a little bit. So he's almost even more really <laughs> evil than a raptor is. Okay. Um, but he did contribute some meat and alien parts. Uh, alien parts are something that you need for certain medical items. Uh, let's grab some more steak here, too, whilst we're at it. Are we still making steak? Oh, no. We just got that new piece of meat. That's why. Okay. Um, so... Just a kind of general rule of thumb for me. Food that's perishable, or more quickly perishable, um, you want to kind of eat that in your base, because you can keep it in your fridge. And it's also, not in every case, but in most cases, it's going to probably be a little bit more filling or more nutritious too. Um, but some stuff that lasts a long time, like, for example, the uh, energy bars, uh, or the ration, which doesn't spoil at all, that's stuff you want to keep in your inventory and take with you when you're out and about. Oh, we never fixed... We never got that going. Okay, let's do the drone for that so we can get right up in here. And uh, we'll get our color tool out again. We want to change to our brick texture and make sure there's no color on. And make sure we're on small and not on whole block. <laughs> Lots of things to check there. Okay, cool. Anyway, what I was, actually what I was going to show to you before we got interrupted by Mr. Cricket is that some of these textures will will actually light up uh, when you power up the base. So if notice that if I power the base down, see that it turns off and then power it up and the, it actually provides like a little light effect. It's really cool. It doesn't do a whole lot, you know, for lighting a room. You need a real light for that, which we're going to make here in a bit, but it just makes things look cool. And then if you color this, you know, different colors, uh, and also use, like, colored lights, you can even get them to glow different colors, and that can look really neat. Um, okay, so, what do we want to do? Let we need to make some doors, and we need to, and, and we need to make a light, so let's do that next. We're going to go to our small constructor, I'm going to queue up three doors, and I'm going to queue up a light. And then I'll show you, uh, how to work with that stuff. Um... There's also a spot out here that I missed that we need to fix. So let's go uh, out here. And for some reason, this didn't get painted correct. So let's go back to our texture that we're using for that, which is this. We're not on color. Okay. And we'll just paint that too. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I thought we had the symmetry plane on when we did that. I don't know why that missed. Sometimes the symmetry plane will mess stuff too. So you know, just be aware of that. Did we get the the roof done? Oh yeah, okay, we used this little red texture for the roof. Gotcha. One thing you can do too is you can put elevators in and then you can actually use the top roof of your structure as a landing pad for a small vessel. Uh, so I have to do that. Um, well, sometimes I do that. What's usually better is to put turrets up there. Just depends upon your setup and the terrain and that sort of thing. Um, Alright, so we are going to... We're making doors, and we made a light. So let's get take a look at those things. So we'll put the doors down here, and we'll put the light down here. All right, so doors. Doors are pretty straightforward. You've got two general types of doors for 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 human entry, for, for people to enter. Um, you've got normal doors, and you have armored doors. And um, armored doors are something you have to learn in the base menu. And those are... Where the hell are they? Automatic doors, shutter doors, hangar doors, blast doors. Oh, here they are, right here. Uh, I was looking at the shutters, and I wasn't paying attention to what's below that. So we can actually learn armor doors right now if we wanted to, but we're just going to, for this particular base, we're just going to use the normal doors. But as you can imagine, these have more hit points than the normal doors. Um, and they, they have a little bit of a different look to them as well. Um, you also have shutter doors, um, and these come in a wide variety of, of lengths and widths that, that are very useful for, you know, creating an enclosure or, you know, a, an access into something where a normal door doesn't make sense. Um, you know, for example, these doors are really only one block high and one or two blocks wide, depending upon the, 
the type you use, but this I can use to uh, fill in um, a much larger space. And sometimes, you know, depending upon how it's laid out, even a space that's not, a, you know, a, a perfect square or rectangle. And then a hangar door is just like a big gigantic garage door. Um, and then a blast door is a really strong version of essentially, a, you know, a hangar or a, more of a hangar as opposed to a shutter. And I think these guys might open sideways or, well, they can probably open in, in whatever direction you put them in. Okay, so anyways, we're we're gonna just boop, spot, uh, speak, talk, talk correctly. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're gonna just use normal doors now. Uh, when I select the door, the most important thing that you need to know about these doors is what you know, which ones are airtight and which ones aren't. So if I use the right-click menu, um, you have a, a variety of different types of doors. Um, these are all just single block doors. This is a double block door, or these are double block doors, and these are curved, uh, round doors that you can put like on a curved corner. The thing about it, though, is the ones that are made out of glass are not airtight, right? So if I hover my cursor over there, you see down in the tooltip where it says airtight false. So all of these glass ones are not airtight. That doesn't matter for here uh, because we have a breathable atmosphere. But if you are in a place where you need to pressurize your building, then you can't use those for um, any, you know, for exterior doors. So really important to keep that in mind. Um, since we are on a... Um, a breathable atmosphere planner. I'm going to choose this centered door. And then, of course, that's going to put the door right in, whoops, right in the center for us. Um, and if you don't use a centered door, then it, then you have to, then you basically have an entryway. So in that case, you know, then you have to decide, you know, what side you want the door on. Usually, if I use one of these, I want the I want the interior door flush with the wall, so you have kind of like a little porch or entryway on the outside. But that's purely, you know, up to you. There's no, there's no game mechanic that says you should do it one way or the other. Uh, but let's go ahead and go with the center doors because I kind of like those, and we'll put those in place. Now, here again, I just want to remind you that these doors are fine for here because we're in a breathable atmosphere and on a temperate planet where we don't have to worry about extreme temperatures. Um, but if you are in on the air planet or the snow planet or another planet with a hostile weather, you you, don't, you can't use these as an exterior door. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do our light next. So with lights, just like doors, you if you right click, um, you have uh, different options that you can use. So wait a minute, did I make the wrong kind of light? What the hell did I just do? Ah, look at that. Okay, this is a mistake you're going to make. I guarantee you, you're going to do it several times. And you're going to learn this game. You're going to play it for several years. You're going to become an ax a pro at it. And you're still going to do this. <laughs> if you notice where it says placeable, I accidentally made a light for an, a, a small vessel and a hover vessel, not for a base. Silly me. Okay, so let's put that in the output. Let's do this again. This time we're going to make sure we're on base. So we're choosing the correct light. And we're going to make a light that you would make for a base instead of one for a hover vessel. It's just one of those things, man. It's so easy to do if you're not paying attention. Let's go ahead and disconnect from our wireless for now. We don't need to stay connected to that. Eat some more steak. Okay, this is the light that we want. So um, if you select the light and right click, then you have a, a variety of different light options. Um, they all pretty much do the same thing in terms of their luminosity, which you can adjust. It's just really a style thing. You know, what, what, what you think will look good. So in our particular case, it might actually look good to either maybe try this square light or even the round light. Um, let's try both and see which one appeals to us better. So let's try the square light first. Okay, so that's kind of cool looking. Um, I could certainly live with that, um, but let's also, ah, oh shit, I forgot, I don't have a multi-tool. All right, their lights are super cheap to make. Let's just make a different one, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what the round one looks like. Yeah, guys, if I was playing the game for real and not doing a tutorial, I would be out right now looking for Prometheum. Um, on the temperate planet, you can find Prometheum... Typically, you can find Prometheum um, under the water, but it's it's pretty rare. You might be looking for a long time, but it is there. Um, or 
you can start riding around in your hover vessel and see if you can locate an irradiated zone. An irradiated zone uh, might have promethium stones on the surface, but it is an irradiated zone, number one. And number two, there are nasty creatures in the irradiated zone that would like to eat you for dinner. So you have to be really careful uh, if you do happen to go into an irradiated zone. The other th the way you can find Promethium is uh, if you're just riding around, you might actually find a Promethium deposit because the temperate planet will have Promethium deposits. Sometimes, though, these deposits are right next to an enemy base, so they may not be easy to get to. But one way or the other, you, you want to come across some Promethium as soon as possible so that you can start using your real multi-tool and using your, your, your actual drill. Let's uh, do something with this real quick. What I think I want to do here. Here, let's try this. Uh, is that what we want? Yeah. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Kind of gives the, the, the overall look and feel of this as a metal ramp, which is exactly what it is. And then we could do the same thing with the stairs if we wanted to. There we go. Let's grab our light. And we're going to have to salvage this one because we can't pick it up, unfortunately, with the with the uh, survival tool. So we'll hit salvage. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the round light up. So, I mean, either one would work. The, it, the square light kind of matches the square tiles on the ceiling, but the round light matches the roundness of the light fixture. So, let's just go ahead and keep it on the round light. We missed a spot up here. Let's go to here. Go to here. I should have used the right click so I didn't have to re, you know close the menu. Make sure it's on small. Make sure it's not on whole block. And boom. Okay, that fixed that. Okay, so once you put a light in place, you have some options with it. Um, so I'm going to turn my own light off so this becomes more apparent and it would be even better in the, if it was dark out, but uh, let's just go with this for now. So I'm going to right click. Actually, you know what? I think there's we can run the time command for that. So if we go time, say 18. Yeah, see that set it to nighttime or actually it must have set it to, to dusk. Yeah, set it to dusk. Let's set this to 20 there now it's now it's full on night for us okay so so when you set the light down um you may find that the light is not really bright enough and you can see that it's certainly not doing a very good job of lighting up our our base here so all you have to do is point your cursor at it and press the p menu and then go to devices and um the p menu will select the the, the light that you're looking at so I have some options here. I can change the color of the light. So I might want a green light, for example, or a yellow light or an orange light or a blue light or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and go with green because I'm kind of in a green mood right now. And that's a good thing. Um, and then you have several options here. You can change the intensity. See, so, you, so you're essentially making it brighter. And you can also change the range. So you want to you want to find some kind of happy medium between these two settings to you know, provide the correct lighting for your base. And um, you also can, if you want to, um, you can set it up as a blinking light. It wouldn't make sense for us to set this light to a blinking light because it would drive us absolutely insane, but you might want to, for example, put um, marker lights on an aircraft that, you know, that blink. Um, and then th in, in that case, then you can, you know, select how, what the frequency is, is of the blink and how long it stays on when it blinks, if there's a delay and that sort of thing. Um, some lights you can set to spotlight mode. So if you set it to spotlight mode, you know, then it's going to be just showing in this spotlight area. And then if you if you use that, then you can also adjust the angle uh, of that spotlight. So if I want it to be a little wider or a little narrower, see, you can do that. So that's pretty cool. But because this is kind of like our main light, uh, we don't want it to be a spotlight. We want it to be a normal light. And, you know, actually... I think the green might be just a little bit too much. So let's go back in here and uh, what about like a blue? Hmm. 
Eh, that looks that looks kind of cool. Um, but it's not. We need a little more intensity. Okay, still a bit dim. And remember, you can put multiple lights up too if you want to. But I'm, I, what I want to do is I want to just kind of cover the whole base with just this one light. So let's increase the range. It's getting better. Still, still a little dim. You do want to be kind of careful though, because if you turn the intensity all the way up, sometimes it can, you know, over oversaturate basically, and you, you can also get sometimes you can get light bleed through the blocks though. I think they've done a better job lately of. You know, a fix in that problem. It used to be a really big problem in the game where, you know, where you'd get the light blade. So I'm, I, in this particular case, if we crank the intensity all the way up, I think it's workable. Um, let's try something else. So let's bump that down a notch and let's increase the range instead and see if we like that better. Yeah. You know, if we if we use that along with our shoulder light, and pretty much, you know, you're going to keep your shoulder light on almost all the time. This this is This works. I think this works okay. Uh, for our base. So let's just go with that. All right, so we learned how to do doors. We learned how to do lights. Um, painting also applies to equipment. Some things you can paint, some things you can't. Some things you can only paint certain parts on them. Um, so let's say we, you know, want to paint our refrigerator green. So we can do that. Um, you you can't, in some cases, you can use textures on a few pieces of equipment, but in, but most of the, in most cases, you can't. Um, so you, that's just something you have to experiment with. Um, so mostly you're just going to do, you know, be using colors on this stuff. So we can make our fridge green if we want to. We can make our food processor a dark green if we want to. Um, we can make our small constructor blue. And then, you know, when we bring in our large constructor, we can make that, you know, red or whatever. It's just really up to you what colors you want to use. Notice that when I paint these things, it only... Uh, changes a certain part of the item and not the whole item. So again, you just have to kind of experiment until you find, you know, what looks good to you. So we'll just set those back to their normal normal look. Um, let's go ahead and paint our generator black because why the hell not? And let's paint our fuel tank blue because why the hell not? And let's paint our uh, armor locker like a yellow. And if we wanted to, we could paint our doors. Maybe we'll make those black doors. So it's really just, you know, like I said, painting and texturing in the game is very subjective. It's really just whatever floats your boat, whatever you think looks good for your particular base and for your particular tastes. Okay, very good. Um, guys, I think that covers pretty much what you need to know about using the, the texture and color tool in the game and basic decoration 101. Um, once you kind of learn how the tool works and you start experimenting, you can really make some cool looking stuff uh, in the game with this painting tool. So it's really, really pretty cool. Okay, so in the next episode, the plan is going to be that we're going to build out our greenhouse and we're going to learn farming 101 in the game. And if time al allows, then we'll also start working on our pad back here, too. And once we have our pad in place, then we're going to start looking at um, vessels, building vessels, and, you know, get into the basics of that. Um, coming up also is defenses. So we want to talk about defenses and, um, you know, defending your base. One of the things that you will want to do, or you should do, before you piss off the Xerox and they start attacking you, or the Talon, if that's who you're pissing off, whoever it is, is you really should upgrade your base to armored concrete. So we'll also uh, take a look at how you can do that uh, in an upcoming episode as well. Not sure how many more episodes we'll do, but you know we, we need to cover basic vessel building. We need to go at least go up into space and maybe visit the moon, um, you know, and kind of cover some things you'll want to know about being up in orbit, and maybe do a little bit of exploration on the planet too and look at a couple different biomes and see if we can discover some prometheum so those are all the things that are coming up and um yeah we'll take it from there so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please hit that like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we'll see you in the next episode don't forget that the table of contents for each video is in the description of the video and i am working on an index uh, with time codes uh, for each video as well, but that's a work in progress, and I'm ju it's just something I'm kind of getting to as I get to time. As of right now, we have full indexes for videos one through four um, at this moment. Okay, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.